Hey guys and welcome to me showcasing arguably my favourite Wood Elf style of play and my favourite Wood Elf build to bring to the multiplayer scene. I'm playing today under the guise of the Blind Bandit up against Caradoc. We've had multiple awesome games before, met in multiple tournaments and he's a very experienced Total War player. So let's slow this down and showcase the build. In fact, I'm probably going to have to pause it off the rip because this is a very, very aggressive build. It is almost full Vanguard. Now I've been bringing this build ever since Great Stags were birthed into the world with their DLC and it is so much fun to use. Now is it the most competitive style of play? Certainly not, but is it the coolest? Arguably, yes. And just to show how bad us it is, we have double great stag knights on this right hand side in a nice vanguard position. And over in the far corner, we have the much cheaper unit of glade riders with spears who, hey, can still pack a punch on the charge. Our main battle line is just dryads dotted through the front line. We can only unfortunately afford four units of them, but they are backed up and being led by a branch wraith coming with a pendulum as well as earth blood. Over on the right hand side, we have another contingent of cavalry who are vanguarded in the face of our opponent. And they come in the form of of the wild hunters of kernos bound in look at the hops on this stag man that is uh, flying through the air elegantly we have the wild hunters of kernos they are anti-large they are of course the regiment of renowned wild riders the purple underlay of their cloaks flapping in the winds gloriously we also have a unit of the sisters of fawn now sisters of fawn certainly underrated in my humble little duck opinion they are rather tanky in the counter skirmish game due to their physical resistance they do some nice skirmishing nice damage as well on the charge and they come in with the shield of Thorns and the prey, two very powerful bound abilities for them. I don't think we have any Glade Guard or Glade Rise in the back this side, unfortunately. We simply cannot afford that many because our Lord can be pretty pricey and flying gloriously into battle. Is it the Glade Lady? No, it is the Glade Lord with the Helm of Discord. This is such a fun unit to build with the Mass Cavalry. You thump in with the Cavalry, you then follow up with a Helm of Discord Dragon and let all carnage break loose. I love as well the evil white eyes of this dragon making it look ethereal and majestic at the same time and with a scored deadly onslaught foe seeker of course have our breath attacks we're even coming in with the banner of the world hunt just a nice little buff it is normally a little bit too expensive but combined with the call of the woods you can really make your great stag knights hit like an absolute armored truck now for my opponent he does have double Elyrian reavers on the right hand side double on the left supported as well by a chariot there's quite a pesky chariot as well it is the skirmish one not the heavy chariot backed up by silver helms and dragon princes galore dotted all the way through the back and up in the skies we have Alario the Radiant, coming with Tempest, Earth Blood, as well as Fars Protection, Star of Avalon, and all her goodies. Now, you may be thinking, Duck, you're doomed. You've been completely counterpicked. How on earth can you beat full cavalry when half your army can't even be used? Well, that is the power of this build. You can get nice and aggressive and try to coerce these people into the back and push them right up against that white line. Unfortunately for me, though, the Silver Helms and Dragon Princess certainly will be a challenge. Now, the Sisters of Fawn counter skirmish in relatively effectively here. They actually do get a cheeky little bit of a charge in on the Reavers before deciding to fall back, bounding away from those Silver Helms. We can do some nice damage as well whilst retreating. Opponents don't really stand too much chance of catching us. The Wild Hunters do actually turn around, wheeling their mighty stags and engage with the Dragon Princess. We then pop a Shield of Fawns down, and honestly, I am super surprised by this. Shield of Fawns plus a curse on the Dragon Princess and the Dragon Princes still beat the Wild Hunters, despite both of them getting their charge bonuses. Absolutely insane. But I don't know if that's RNG or just a straight up fa like fact that this happens, so I definitely need to test it out a little bit more. In the left-hand side, the Drides are trying to catch the Dragon Princes where possible. We've also swooped upon some of my enemy cavalry, trading blows, Silver Helms are breaking, likewise our Great Stag Knights. So now we have Drides flooded in and Glade Riders trying to pin the Dragon Princes in place. We do get a fast protection go down on the Dragon Princes though, and that's going to be quite a messy engagement on the left hand side on the right tower the dragon has managed to swoop in terror out in the dragon princes who are eventually forced off but not before they butcher the uh, regiment around wild riders there silver helms as well as chariots are also filling the wrath of the mighty forest beast so a decent engagement on the right hand side we're also dragging away Illyrian reavers with the help of the sisters of fawn here now in the main fight we did drop a big, fat, juicy pendulum down the Dragon Princes. My opponent count plays there with the lovely Star of Avalon. Great Stags have got the Dragon Princes surrounded amongst the Drides as well. Now, normally you want to be cycle charging with your Great Stags, but when you're pinning in enemies like this, you must uh, stand and fight as long as possible. And the Drides are starting to drag down the enemy, despite the Star of Avalon coming into action. Branch Wraith is going to charge forward, popping a little Earth Blood down, just trying to keep the Drides as well as the Great Stag Knights fighting as long as possible. They also have a Scroll of Shield, and we are pinning the enemy in place. 
place. Hopefully that should buy time for the Glade Lord to fly over there and bring the pain to the enemy. Now, Dryads are absorbing a load of damage. I really don't mind this whatsoever. If my Dryads eat all the archers, so be it. Like, that's absolutely fine. As long as those arrows aren't going into my dragon, I'm a happy little ducky. The Wild Hunters did try to charge in there and bring some pain to the Heralds of the Wind. Unfortunately, are driven away, but once again, are absorbing a lot of ammunition. Now, down in the main fight, on this left hand side you can see dryads are routing and fleeing and the balance power is going slightly against me however the dragon is about to catch a bucket ton of units we have double dragon princes in here plus silver helms so we come with that big old fat juicy breath attack make some relatively okay contact nothing too crazy but hey damage is damage at the end of the day and now we're going to swoop in here foe seeker is popped and our dragon is angry we're coming in with a pendulum going down the line on the dragon prince as well going to help break them the great stack knights in combination here with the Glade Lord are doing a fantastic job and this is all of a sudden being turned into a winning situation from a rather negative one. Now in the back the sisters have managed to drag two units of cavalry wide, uh, silver helms as well as reavers attempting to chase them down but the sisters quite happy to cackle at them and throw javelins where possible but over on this right hand side my opponent doing a really solid job here of just wrapping up all my drives and other units. You see a lot of ammunition still being used up though and they are starting to dwindle quite a bit and we still have a mighty dragon left on the field who can quite comfortably destroy Alariel in the fight as well. Now the branch wraith is desperately trying to catch up to Alariel and start to drag her down. We are going to get some pretty big hits into the rear of her as the great stags in the distance are used to help chase off some of the dragon princes. They actually try to float back as quickly as possible to pin in Alariel, but she is able to escape the Glade Lord. However, though, we'll better force off this unit of 22 dragon princes. That's some very good value. That the onslaught was even popped as well, just to ensure a uh, rather vicious and swift exit for the dragon princes as the Glade Lord does fly high and proud above them. So we've come to a bit of a lull in the battle. Balance power is still relatively even. My opponent certainly has the upper hand in numbers, but we certainly have the upper hand in the fact we have a freaking dragon on the battlefield, and my opponent is starting to dwindle a little bit on ammunition, but still decent amounts, like seven volleys here, eight volleys here, but he wants to be saving all that ammo for the dragon. If any of these ar arrows are kind of loosed on drives and other such units, it's really not going to be getting them the best of the value, and I'm trying to bait out as many shots as possible with the Sisters of Thorn. I want all the smoke with them. I want all the shots coming at me so I can juke back and forth and just kind of ignore the damage where possible also with that physical resistance now alariel does pop arcane conduit trying to get some more magic fueled into her body great stags were bounding over to attempt to save the drives i knew it was always a slim chance but you got to take those when your friends are being slaughtered and the glade lord is on approach he's gonna be trying to focus down at the alariel the radiant where possible from long range because a lot of people forget the male uh, glade lord still has a bow still does a load of damage he just doesn't have the prey of enough raymer instead has that helm of discord and he does manage to sweep there are some pretty big shots now we do get a big fat earth blood go down it's going to catch the uh, Silver Helms, Heralds of the Wind, and Dragon Princes. Dragon Princes really being the key ones there, trying to heal them up where possible. Our Javelins are floating in, dishing out some pain to the Reavers, and I'm on the prow, hunting down Alariel where possible, and trying to snap my Dragon Jaws around her puny neck. Unfortunately, though, we are going to eat a Tempest. I knew this was most likely coming, but oh my god, is it painful. So Tempest does come in. We counter punch it with an Earth Blood to try to mitigate some of the damage, but this is the perfect time for all these archers to fire their shots in. So I'm going to counter punch a little bit, coming with a big fat juicy breath attack down on the Reavers, just wreaking some havoc where possible, and I'm going to have to try to absorb this damage. We still have Terra in the late game. If I can catch Alaro in the skies and defeat her, the rest of the army should rout comfortably. So we're trying to pull back with the Sisters of Fawn. They're getting a little bit tangled up here with the Dragon Prince, and we're like, no sorry, I do not want to fight you. Please flee, as the Branch Wraith slowly, slumbrously comes to our aid as well. We do have a unit of Dryads I want to come back. They were coming back briefly, but they are now routing once more, so we're simply going to float our cavalry up around my opponent and we're going to be forced to attack the archers because we do now have to commit to an actual fight. The dragon does manage to catch Alariel. She does manage to float away though relatively unscathed. We are desperately trying to hunt her down. Foe Seeker is popped to give us a bit of a speed boost. Star of Avalon has been uh, going down as well but we're going to be forcing out Alariel rather quickly from that. Helmet Discord it does go down as I attempt to get to grips with the lady. Oh she once again manages to evade our snapping jaws and I think at this point with the Helmet Discord I kind of need to start committing to a fight Otherwise, it could get messy. Our great stags, though, are driving away chariots and reavers with the help of the branch wraith, which is rather nice on that left-hand side. 
Hilario did manage to swoop back and forth amongst the Star of Avalon, getting some nice heals on herself as well. And now the Helm of Discord is gone, which is a bit of a disaster. So Branch Rafe is trying to hold the line. The Glade Lord is continuing to try to pursue Hilario, but there's simply no way I can chase her. And leaving the Branch Rafe alone like this, I don't think I had a uh, pendulum left, so I kind of know I need to help her out with the dragon. Big fat breath attack comes down on the dragon princes, and here we go, looking to swoop down upon the enemy and bring pain and destruction to Elvish Kind. As the dragon does come in, my opponent does earn a wish counter with a earth blood coming in, which is quite nice. And look at this silver helms with dragon princes abandoning their posts, abandoning their lady, and the chain reaction starts. More dragon princes being terrified, two units being terrified. That's four total now. Some of them start to be shattered as well, but the Glade Lord can't quite break these chariots and reavers who are desperately clinging on their leadership, getting very, very low. However, Lariel needs to rally the troops, and it looks like that's just what she's done. Dragon Princes lower their lances to try to slay the beast and earth blood, emboldening them to face such a mighty foe. And there's some lovely rear and flank attacks. The dragon is pinned in place, and dragons are very squishy. Lariel comes in to peck at the eyes of the dragon, forcing it from the battlefield, and the elvish forces doth break. Very well played to Karolok. Really fun game. I've been having quite a bit of fun actually now and again, just popping on quick battles again and bringing some more exciting kind of crazy builds. And uh, it's always good to run into Karolok. Very talented player. Always a good sport as well. And this level higher field is that actually too crazy. Like this level higher field is very meta at the moment. You tend to see them go with a bucket ton of cavalry or a bucket ton of uh, single entities and chariots and then a L'Oreal. It's just a very powerful elite infantry or elite... Um, kind of like range troops so forth can be bullied a bit more but elite cavalry with healing is far more scary and that's why we see it so often and done so well here by Caradoc. despite that though come on the glade lord man 3508 damage value such awesome work a lord i really wish more people brought he's so fun to use with cavalry i highly recommend trying it out and experimenting a little bit rather than going with you know, the standard glade lady and, and the sisters and so on hope you guys enjoyed this battle it was a good fun one to play and cast i'm going to delve into the kills damage dealt damage value all that good stuff in just a second but if you guys don't mind make sure to leave a big fat juicy thumbs up comment down below what you thought of the battle or simply yell quack at me and subscribe to the channel all those things massively help out there's also a load of links down below in the description if you're interested in that kind of thing i've got my discord in there where you can submit replays get involved in tournaments live streams all that cool stuff as well as a uh, links down below to my patreon my twitch everything down there you'll go down enjoy the something for everyone Anyway, back to the army. So, 73 kills, 3.5k. Glade Lord really was a massive standout for me. And uh, we tried our best to kind of like beat out the arrows with the drides. It was always going to be a bit of a rough fight when I saw my opponent's build. This build, of course, much better at cracking an enemy center and trying to like, overrun archer cores and that kind of stuff. Because the drides, yeah, 500 value's not bad. But apart from that, they all did relatively terrible. Simply having no good targets, apart from being pin cushions. And that was their main job today. Branch Wraith got 1,115 damage value value of 17 kills some really nasty pendulums in there and trying to heal up in the latter stages wasn't quite enough now the glade riders did get shut down only 145 damage on them as so for the great stags 53 kills 1604 damage value is really nice the other units fared much worse though fringe and 10 value and 944 on the wild hunters honestly incredibly surprised that them combined with the shield of fawns combined with the prey as well to nuke the dragon princes lose so heavily to dragon princes kind of crazy um although the dragon did come over there and assist them in the the later stages they were really struggling up against the princes i obviously you know they do have a high armor but still i was honestly very shocked when i look back on the replay because at the time i was like oh obviously the archers must have helped but no it looks like the wild hunters just kind of uh, lose the princes pretty heavy this is a fawn got 29 kills and 949 damage value not too shabby and also just been an annoying harass unit just absorbing as much ammo as possible because that was so crucial the rest of this build can't do too much to the dragon so it was really can i get rid of the reavers who i think performed amazing so the chariot 1058 damage value love the picker as well certainly an underrated utility piece heralds of the wind 800 value 1100 1073 and 994 across the board for the reavers all performing absolutely amazing being real standout stars here now dragon princes one you got 2000 damage value and 68 kills the others just shy of 1000 value and 1.2 the elite cavalry performing really well here likewise did the silver helms 1159 damage value and 733 alariel of course not getting much value she really couldn't engage in too many fights because of the dragon's lurking presence but still great support really nice use of the star of avalon as well just driving the dragon around to ensure she got those healings whilst baiting out the helm of discord 
Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Until next time, peace, peace. And as always, stay awesome.